This is the Barbados Today Evening News for Monday, April 30th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Our top story this evening, Barbados is among several Caribbean countries named in a new report by the Global Police Organization, Interpol, in a crackdown on human trafficking. In the report released today, Interpol said they discovered 350 possible victims of sexual exploitation and forced labor. And 22 people were arrested this month in Barbados, Belize, Brazil, Jamaica, and Venezuela. Interpol said men, women, and children were discovered working in nightclubs, farms, mines, factories, and open-air markets. They were lured across the borders by traffickers targeting vulnerable and desperate people with promises of a better life. In other news, Culture Minister Stephen Lashley is defending his government's track record over the past five years ahead of next month's general election. On May 24, voters will decide whether to give the Democratic Labour Party a third term in office or whether to choose the Barbados Labour Party. Speaking on the sidelines of the Reggae on the Hill Festival yesterday, Lashley told Barbados Today that the DLP has proven it's been working in the interest of the people. I am very confident that Barbadians haven't examined all of the facts in relation to our economy, in relation to our social services, in relation to where we need to go as a people. That they will see that the government has been, you know, doing its best in very trying economic times. And every candidate on the ground in their constituency, we are focused on explaining to Barbadians where we are at. We are focused on, on, on telling them our vision. And I believe that when we fight each election, there are 30 elections, when we approach it from that perspective and we, 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 we really rally with people and we explain to people, I believe that Barbadians will understand it and they will choose that kind of focus as distinct from a focus that says we are going to lift every area of taxation without saying where the revenue is coming from. A total of seven parties are contesting the May 24 election. However, political observers say it will be a straight fight between the incumbent Democratic Labour Party and the opposition Labour Party. Lashley agrees, although he says the new parties should not be discounted. I think it is good for democracy, but I think at the end of the day, I believe that this is going to be a race between the two established parties. But we should not discount the new parties. I think the new parties are there. We have to respect that they are there. And I think the candidates that will make a difference in this election are those that will be out there explaining to Barbadians what their, their focus is explain to them their concerns because they do recognize that Barbadians have concerns. We will be naive not to recognize that Barbadians do have concerns. But any government that has had to take the country through the kind of brutal recession that we have had um, will have issues. It is for us to explain those issues. What I can say to you though is that the Democratic Labour Party has been the only government in Barbados that has had to manage the economy in recessionary times. Meanwhile, opposition leader Mia Motley says she was heartened by the crowds at the Barbados Labour Party's picnic on the East Coast last weekend. Motley's BLP is looking to unseat the Democratic Labour Party in next month's election. And speaking on the Reggae on the Hill last evening, Motley said Saturday's event was just a warm-up before the campaign intensifies over the next few weeks. There's a lot of hard work before us for the next three weeks between now and May 24th. And we are, if anybody knows me, they know that I don't take anything for granted. I dot every I, I cross every T. I'm not interested in the politics of abuse. I'm not interested in the politics of cursing. I'm interested in how we can make people's lives better. This election got to be about the issues because it's the issues that are putting food on people's table. It's the issues that are allowing people to get jobs. It's the issues that are going to save our dollar. It's the issues that are going to get the sewage system working. It got to be about the issues this time round. Motley, a former music manager, said the BLP will work to facilitate business for promoters and managers if it forms the next government. It's too difficult for promoters to be able to put on anything in Barbados, whether it's music or sports or whatever. And we need to have a seamless framework. I've met with a lot of them. We're conscious of it and we're going to do something. I know it firsthand from when we ran Line Pelican. So nobody needs to tell me about it. Um, and therefore, 
we're going to work with them because the truth is we need to have 52 weeks a year. We need to have events here that cause people from other parts of the world to want to come besides sun, sea and sand. And if you have a festival like this going on, if you have a football tournament going on, if you have cricket going on, if you have a carnival going on, that's another reason for people to want to come to Barbados. And that adds they all come spending dollars. And that means jobs for people. So we're going to get it to happen, trust me. There's regional and international news after this short break. One night, one winner, only one team can deliver. Balance, comprehensive, unrivaled coverage. Barbados Today, Capital Media HD 99.3 and Six Gear Studios. Don't miss election night on www.facebook.com forward slash Barbados Today on www.barbadostoday.bb live on www.capitalmediahd.com and on www.facebook.com forward slash Capital Media HD. Thank you for staying with us. We're back now with news from the region. It is one month before the start of this year's hurricane season, but at least one regional prime minister says the Caribbean is not ready. With the Category 5 hurricanes Irma and Maria still fresh in their memory, Caribbean countries are especially worried about the season. And addressing a recent ECLAC forum, St. Lucia's Prime Minister Alan Chastney said despite the widespread devastation caused by last year's storms, the region is not prepared. We we're now 30 days away from the hurricane season. And I told you, it knows no prejudice. It holds nothing back. So a year has gone by, and, can we, and we've asked ourselves that simple question. Are we more prepared today than we were last year at this time for the hurricane season? I think we all know what the answer to that question is. We're prepared in our minds, but we're certainly not prepared physically for this hurricane season. And on the international scene, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today stepped up pressure on the U.S. to pull out of a 2015 nuclear deal with Iran. He presented what he called evidence of a secret Iranian nuclear weapons program in a primetime address on Israeli TV. We get more in this Reuters report. Iran lied. Big time. Speaking first in English and backed up by large annotated slides, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accused Iran of violating a landmark nuclear deal. Iran lied about never having a nuclear weapons program. Netanyahu on Monday said Israel had obtained secret Iranian archives showing Tehran had at one point sought to develop weapons-grade nuclear material and warheads, something Iran has always denied. So Iran devised a plan to do two things. First, to preserve the nuclear know-how from Project Ahmad, and second, to further develop its nuclear weapons-related capabilities. That plan came directly from Iran's top leadership. The Prime Minister said Iran's failure to disclose the program violated the country's commitment to come clean about its nuclear past. That commitment was key to a 2015 accord between Tehran and six major world powers. That deal lifted international sanctions on Iran in exchange for limits and monitors on Iran's nuclear facilities. Israel has long opposed the agreement. Netanyahu's presentation comes as U.S. President Donald Trump weighs whether or not to withdraw from that deal. And Trump on Monday seemed receptive to the message. What Israel has done today with the news conference and Prime Minister Netanyahu just gave a very, I don't know if everybody's seen it, but I got to see a little bit of it. And uh, that is just not an acceptable situation. Trump has set a self-imposed deadline of May 12th to decide on the fate of the deal, which he's repeatedly criticized. International monitors have repeatedly said that Iran is in compliance with the terms of the 2015 agreement. And that's news. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also sign up to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM, and you can now sign up for BT's WhatsApp news alerts. Visit our website for more directions. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good evening. Thank you.